you know, it, it's not going to be long before these companies run out of funding. They run out of message to try to push on people. The idea now that people today are to be held responsible for acts of aggression that originated 450 or 60 years ago is just uh, silly. And it, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry to tell y'all that. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Pop Culture Rocks, and you know who I am, man. Let's Let's get to this and let's address it. Oh, what a picture. What a picture. Look at that angry little black girl there. Oh, and Spike Spiegel, I guess the voice actor. I guess that's who Steve Blum is. I don't know. I like Cowboy Bebop, though. Quite a bit. Uh, the uh, live action shit was very strange, very strange. Prolific voice actor Steve Blum endorses the Proud Family, louder and prouder reparations call. Well, Steve, you pay them. If you feel guilty about being a white man, a descendant of European lineage, Steve, and uh, you feel like these people are entitled to some of your grit, some of your hard-earned, then you, uh, you reach into your pockets and you go pay them, sir. I'm not going to do it. And if you tax me, I just won't pay the taxes. I'll work under the table. You see, I won't work at all. Before I'll be subject to some bullshit like that, I won't be doing any of that. So, Steve, you can pay my part, too. Says anti-woke, quote-unquote, rhetoric is dangerous and divisive. No, uh, pushing the idea that I'm responsible for some form of original sin because of my skin color and lineage is dangerous and divisive, Steve. That is dangerous and divisive. Trying to push this on people that had nothing to do with slavery is dangerous and divisive. Why don't you get together with your Biden administration and figure out how all of you liberals are going to divvy up this expense that you want to dole out to them. Go dole it out to them. See, I didn't come to nobody with my hand out. I, I didn't do that. But you benefit from Hugh White supremism, Hammer. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell that I benefit from Hugh White supremism. I could tell when I was being beaten and raped. Oh, oh, you didn't think that that could happen to, to fellas? You didn't think that could happen to guys? I could tell when I was eating out of dumpsters so I didn't starve to death. I could tell that. You know, Oprah Winfrey made this ridiculous remark or somebody associating her saying that a white bum on the street had more privilege than a billionaireess, Oprah Winfrey. And if, if you believe that fucking shit, I want you to open your wallets, hand me all of your dough, everything, everything. Because if you're dumb enough to believe that, you're dumb enough to hand me all of your cash. It's, it's just that simple. I'm not going down the road of feeling guilty or feeling out of place because somebody is crying, because they're heckling, because they have been institutionalized. That ain't my problem. I have been institutionalized. So have you, Steve. All of us have. We are being pitted against one another, my friend. Well, I'm not really your friend, but you know how it is. Just being polite, being cordial. Let me get back to this one. Let's go to that Big-headed girl right there. Look at that big-ass head. Man, that's an ugly-ass expression. Ugly expression. Though it may have been written off by most as anything from shameless activism to outright propaganda, the recent call for slavery reparations made by Disney's The Proud family, louder and prouder, has been answered by at least one individual voice actor, Steve Blum. Hmm. The moment in question occurs at the climax of the 13th episode of the Disney Plus. There's a big shocker. Some other race-baiting, race-hustling piece of shit on Disney Plus. 
Revival's second season, Curved. Curved. They're getting all of the, the youth slang in there. They're in seeking to solidify a win for their school debate team, Penny. And her team perform slam poetry number in support of their position. Black people should receive reparations from the United States government in order to apologize for once engaging in the practice of slavery. I'd like to uh, take this moment to let you know that over 600,000 Americans, white, few white Americans, died to end the practice of slavery. Now, it wasn't solely the practice of slavery that was an added benefit. It was absolutely, absolutely monetary, the war between the North and the South. Slavery was an excuse. The more that you look into it, the more you read, the more that you inform yourself, the more you cannot ignore that conclusion. I don't owe you nothing. I'm sorry about that. Not really sorry. No, not really sorry. I don't owe you nothing. And I won't be shamed or blamed or goaded into thinking that I ever owe somebody something because they said so. Especially when I haven't wronged you, I haven't aggressed you, I haven't grieved you. And if just being alive and being white grieves you, then tough fucking shit. Too bad for you. Toughen up a little bit. Uh, be a little more like your ancestors. They were very tough. This country was built on slavery, begins the group. No, this country was actually not built on slavery. It was built by pioneers. It was built by settlers. The nauseating rhetoric that comes from the left on this topic, talking about uh, slaves built the United States. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Just by sheer volume, there wasn't enough of them to build anything. They didn't have permissions to build anything. Even if they were used solely as automatons to construct everything, they couldn't have done it. They couldn't have done it. Plain and simple. So we can get past that nonsense too. Which means slavery built this country. No, you can't conflate these st statements. Tilled this land from sea to sea. That's absolutely untrue absolutely nauseatingly untrue. Now, if you worked a plantation that had a few acres on it, even if it was 40 acres, 50 acres, it doesn't really matter. If you had a hundred slaves there on that plantation, they're not tilling much more than a hundred acres. Plain and simple. Hard work, that's for sure. I've done backbreaking hard work. I know what it means to till the land. So yeah, they kill you really soon. Kill you fast, man. First, there was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Eli Whitney did his thing, and cotton became king. Do you know how many white Irish descent slaves there were picking cotton? My grandfather picked cotton, you motherfuckers. Do you understand? No, of course you don't understand. My grandfather picked tobacco. That wasn't that long ago. Under pretty bad conditions, man. And we were its soldiers. No, you weren't. Four million strong. That's exactly right. Four million. Four million. Y'all should do some looking at that number right there. These people are, are pitching narratives at you. They're not pitch, pitching factual, actual data. Fighting for America's freedoms, even though we remained America's slaves. Slaves built this country, the team proclaims. The descendants of slaves continue to build it. No, they don't. No, they don't. They're no more freer or slaved up than any white person, than any Irish person, than any Chinese person that's over here. No, they don't. That's, that's a falsehood. That's a lie. You have this group hive mind grievance complex. You know, like women, women have the same thing. They have the same thing. They have this hive mind that they think out of. And they all follow one another. The strongest, loudest voices, no matter how incorrect or wrong they are, lead that feminine culture. And most of you ain't feminine no more. You might think you are. You ain't. You ain't. The descendants of slaves continue it and... We, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering. How fucking cool is that, man? 
So somebody else can suffer a lifetime ago that you never knew, never met, never had anything to do with, and you can collect money on their behalf? Wow, sweet deal. And continue to earn reparations every moment that we spend submerged in this systemic prejudice, racism, white supremacy. And America was founded with it and still, oh my God, just dripping with Marxism and communist overtones. Goodness gracious me. Look at this angry little penny proud here. <gasps> angry face. Look at this angry face. Very, very typical for the little Blix's girls in this country to have this little angry face right here. All of their men leaving, going overseas, finding nice Brazilian women, Colombian women, Southeast Asian women, Filipino women. Yep, that's what happens. Look at the little white liberal stick girl here. Hey, look at her. She never says a whole word in, a, in any of this. She stays silent and she protects them with her body. <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Hold on. Let's uh Yeah, let's do that. You can see the little white girl there. Yeah. Look at all these angry faces, man. So angry, so mad that they can't get people to bite down on this narrative. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are very frustrated that they can't get white people to hate themselves more. You see, they got a portion of white people to self-loathe. You can call them all liberals, all of them, all of them, every single one. This stuff is absurd, man. It's ridiculous. Look at these stereotypical, ridiculous little characters. Ew. 40 acres and a mule, then they then question, referring to General William Tecumseh Sherman's 19, or 1865 proclamation allotting free slaves plots of land no bigger than the referenced size of a loaned mule with which to till it. We'll take the 40 acres, keep the mule. What would you do with the 40 acres? You don't know how to do anything. Most of you have no skills whatsoever. None of you. The same goes for white people. By the way, in case you think I'm picking on you because you're your color. Asserting we made you family rich, the team then bellows from the southern plantation heirs to the northern bankers to the New England ship owners, former presidents, current senators, the Illuminati, the Illuminati, the New World Order, the last two being played off as a joke. Slaves built this country. No, they didn't. That's an abject, it's a demonstrable lie. It can be proved beyond any shadow of a doubt. They worked. They were owned. They were chattel. That's it. And it's a very small percentage of those descendants that live here today. Very small. Most everybody else is like from Nigeria. Ghana. We had Tubman, Turner, Frederick Douglass. They should be ashamed of themselves for lumping Frederick Douglass into this. I watched uh, Young Ripper's Eric July's breakdown on this, and uh, he was uh, kind of incensed that they dropped Frederick Douglass in this. And I don't think that uh, Tubman or Turner would fit into this so easily as they think, but Frederick Douglass, absolutely not. Then they say Lincoln freed the slaves, an incorrect assertion as slaves were actually freed within the United States by the 13th Amendment. Well, that's debatable. But slaves were men and women, and we can only free ourselves. At the team, Jim Crow segregation, redlining public schools, feeding uh, private prisons, where we become slaves again. Yeah, well, uh, who wrote the 94 crime bill? Didn't all of you very smart, held down, foot on the throat bitches out there understand who, who you were voting into office? You voted into the presidency, the guy that wrote the 94 crime bill that decimated your community. You did that. Oh, and white liberal women did that. Anybody but Trump. Well, you got anybody but Trump. Drawing their performance to a close, the team recaps as we celebrate Juneteenth 
for the umpteenth time. Our account is still outstanding because this country was built on slavery, which means slaves built this country. We demand 40 acres and a mule. You can demand a billion dollars. You're never going to get it. You're never going to get it. You can dem demand a rocket ride to the moon. You're never going to get it. Never going to get it. You can't demand from your own people accountability, but you demand from somebody else to finance your lives? Everybody involved with this absurd project should be ashamed of themselves. Look at these goofy motherfuckers. Just goofy. Can you imagine being such a self-loather as this little white thing right here to include yourself in this voluntarily? Disgusting. Yeah, I think we won't be, uh, well, no, hold on. Unsurprisingly, after being shared to social media, the Slaves Built This Country segment drew mixed, to say the least, reactions. <laughs> Planting themselves firmly on the critical side of the argument was a Twitter user in wokeness who, in sharing the clip, described its contents as blatant anti-white propaganda. Well, that's exactly what it is. I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's blatant anti-whiteism. It's anti-whiteism. That's what it is. They don't give a fuck who you are, where you are. They don't see white ethnicity. They don't see ethnicities inside of white people. They don't see that. Too bad, right? Steve Blum. Here's Steve Blum. I'm white and a voice actor who will probably never work on this show for the most excellent of reasons. Because you're white? Another self-loather. Your tweet is blatantly racist. Your anti-woke rhetoric is dangerous and divisive. I full-throatedly support Disney, the Proud family, and all of my colleagues for doing this. Well, that's a over-the-top digging in your asshole for corn pellets virtue signal. Steve Blum, got to put you on the list now. You know that list where I don't support people that support the destruction of who and what I am. So no thank you to you, Steve Blum. Uh, eat a dick. And I think we're done. Yes, I think we're done with that one. So we don't ever, ever, ever fall victim to this type of narrative. You never allow people to dictate to you who and what you are. And you don't put your kids or young people down who are impressionable and moldable and malleable down in front of a TV or a cell phone or a DVD player any more. Any more. Do not do this anymore. Or they are going to end up telling you how much you owe them because they sympathize with people that hate your fucking guts and are trying to destroy your heritage and your culture and you with it. Don't do that.